you starting and more importantly, sticking with your fitness routine. Um, so, you know, staying consistent with working out can be a huge challenge. So whether it's you, know, you have a busy work schedule or social life, or you have kids, or maybe you're a, a newbie to fitness and you feel like you don't have the knowledge or the confidence to even take that first step to getting started. Or maybe you have like an all or nothing mindset when it comes to working out where you're like, oh, if I can't get to the gym five or seven days a week, it's not even worth it. Um, so whatever that obstacle is that's standing in your way of starting or sticking with your exercise routine, we're really going to dig in this session and discover some science-based secrets to forming those consistent habits. And so we can create our personalized action plans in real time. So you really walk away with something tangible. So if you have like pen and paper or you pull up a note on your phone or whatever it is, um, we'll go through some exercises. So you can actually apply what we're doing today with your own um, exercise routine. So the reason I really want to focus on habits today is because like this quote says here, you know, success is the product of daily habits, those small, seemingly insignificant steps, and they add up over time. It's not just one day you have this sudden transformation. It's really the compound effect of showing up and staying consistent with those habits. So that's what we're really going to talk about today, the four laws of building good habits. First, we're going to challenge a common misconception when it comes to fitness and, and really anything in life when, that we're trying to start or to change or improve upon. And that's the idea that when we're, um, when we're starting on these journeys, that the first step and our main focus should be on goal setting. And, you know, some examples of goal setting might be, uh, I want to be able to do 20 consecutive push-ups by the end of this month, or I want to lose 15 pounds in six months. Um, and goals are can be great, uh, but when we focus just on setting the goal, we're focusing on the results first. What we need to be focusing on more is the habits or the systems that we're putting in place or that need to be put in place to make sure that you're actually achieving that goal. Um, because when we're starting any routine, it's actually more important to just make sure you're simply showing up for your workouts than it is to see results. Um, you know, when two people, they might have the same exact goal. So for example, two people might have the same goal of, I want to be going to the gym three times a week, but only the person who clearly defines how they're going to do that. Um, and the, when, and the, where those, that person is going to be the one who is going to be the most successful. So in terms of how do we create lasting habits, uh, there is a book called Atomic Habits by James Clear. If you um, haven't already listened to it, I highly recommend reading it or listening to it on audiobook book. It's really, um, really awesome. Uh, so James Clear created the, these four laws to create a good habit. And we're gonna walk through those four laws. And within each law, we have a few exercises we're gonna go through so that you can take what we're learning and create your own kind of, um, your own systems in place to make sure that you're starting or sticking with your current exercise routine. So the first law here is to make it obvious. Um, and I'm gonna walk through five different exercises to help you implement this law. So the first exercise is to use what's called implementation intentions. Uh, so basically you're saying or writing down, I will blank behavior at blank time in blank location. Um, and so let's look a little bit closer at the science and the research that supports this. There was a study done that showed that people who filled out this sentence right here were two to three times more likely to exercise consistently. Um, and what happened was researchers took a group of 250 people and the goal was to build better exercise habits over a two week period. Uh, the subjects were divided up into three groups. The first group was the control group. They were simply asked to track how often they exercised. The second group was considered the motivation group. So they were also asked to track their workouts like the first group, but they were also given reading material um, about the benefits of exercise and how exercise could reduce the risk of heart disease and improve heart health. The third group were shown that same motivational presentation as the second group. So they both had equal levels of motivation. Um, however, the third group was also asked to formulate a plan for when and where they would exercise over the following week by writing down this sentence. During the next week, I will partake, partake in at least 20 minutes of vigorous exercise on blank day at blank time in blank place, like really getting specific and creating a, a set plan. 
the results from this um, study showed that groups one and two, they had a 35 to 38% um, chance of exercising at least once per week. So even with the motivational presentation given to group two, there really was no difference in terms of performance. But the third group who actually formulated that plan, they were 91% um, more likely to have exercised once per week. So that's double the, the rates in groups one and two. So really just the simple act of writing down a plan that said exactly when and where they intended to exercise, those participants in group three were then much more likely to actually follow through. Um, I hear a lot with my own clients and even just in general, just day-to-day -day kind of conversations, people say things like, oh, I don't have the willpower or the discipline or the motivation to do things when it comes, especially when it comes to our wellness habits. And what this study kind of shows that's an interesting take on it is that it's not that you don't have the willpower or the motivation. Um, maybe the, the small difference between that desire to change and real life results is, is about that implementation and really setting that plan into place. Um, because, you know, motivation does ebb and flow. But if you have a, a formulated plan that you've created, sometimes that can help um, move, move the needle forward. So your action step for this exercise, it's Monday, it's the start of a new week today. So why don't we use this exercise and write out your implementation intentions for your exercise routine this week. And feel free to share in the chat box. Um, and I'll give us about you know 30 seconds here. You can kind of write it on your own. If you need more time, just screenshot this and kind of use this as an exercise that you can do on your own at a later point. Um, an example of this for myself personally, I know this week is a busy week, so I'm probably not going to be able to get to the gym. So my implementation intention is I will exercise a minimum of three times this week during lunch at home. So yeah, if you have any um, ideas that you wanna share in the chat box of your own implementation intentions, feel free, they're not required, but um, always nice to kind of share and brainstorm different ideas. All right, moving on to our next slide. Um, another way to really make it obvious is to just physically schedule your workouts in advance into your calendar for the week, or if you have the time, even for the month, um, whether that's plugging it into your Google calendar, um, your written appointment book, or if you have a calendar on your wall, which, whichever way, there's no right or wrong, however you prefer and really like visualize it better. Um, and then on those scheduled exercise days, you can use that statement, that intention implementation from the slide before to really get clear on your action plan and then schedule it into your calendar. Um, and what happens is when we put it into our calendar, we view it as an appointment, whether it's a, you know, similar to a doctor's appointment or a work meeting that we wouldn't miss. And you are prioritizing these workouts and you can schedule other things for the most part around these workouts rather than just hoping you're gonna find the time during the week because it can be difficult, you know, life gets in the way. So if you, if it's a weekend and you had planned to go to the gym in the morning, but then say your kids, friends, parents invite you to a play date at the playground, you can say, sure, I'd love to do that. I can make it anytime after 11 a.m. because you have already scheduled that workout in your calendar. You've prioritized it. And it doesn't mean you have to, you know, give up your social life or whatever it is, but you're making sure that that is the thing that you do first and then everything else will follow. So your action step for this exercise is after this call, try and plug your workouts right into your calendar. If a whole month seems intimidating, which I get, just break it up for this week. Like what in the next seven days, when are you gonna exercise? Where are you gonna exercise? Um, and put it right in your calendar. The next strategy to making it, it obvious, and I think this is one of the most important things, um, is to build your backup plan. I always tell my clients, if plan A doesn't work out, what's your plan B, C, D, or E? Because life happens and we need to be prepared with our backup plans. Um, because if we wanna keep a routine and really prioritize those exercise goals, we need to be prepared. Um, so this if then exercise can really help you to identify obstacles and barriers um, that might come up that are keeping you from getting to your exercise routine or sticking with it or starting it. And then it'll help you come up with an alternative solution. So I wanna show you some examples here. Um, 
really I think this is one of the most powerful and it's very simple exercises that you can do to just identify and get clear on well what's holding me back from getting to the gym or um, starting a routine or staying consistent with my routine. Um, and then once you've identified that barrier, you can come up with a solution. So some examples using this if then statement, if I am consistently missing my scheduled evening workout because I'm exhausted by the end of the day, then I will schedule morning workouts instead so I get it done first thing. If I am struggling to get out of bed for my morning workout, then I will sleep in my clean workout clothes. So all I have to do is just roll out of bed, throw my shoes on and get out the door. If I oversleep and miss my morning workout, I will plan to do a 20 minute workout at lunch or a seven minute workout in the evening when I get home. If I am bored with my current workout routine, then I will schedule a new workout class with a friend instead. If my body is tired, I will go for a walk or take a yoga class or simply take a rest day and maybe do some stretching. If I have to work late this week and won't be able to get uh, any workouts in, then I will make sure to schedule two solid workouts for Saturday and Sunday. If I am traveling, then I will use the hotel gym or walk to explore the new city that I'm in. So these are just some examples and the action step that I would um, suggest would be for right now, think of, you know, there can be a lot of different obstacles, but I want you to think of the, like the most important, the one that is really a driving factor in holding you back from achieving those exercise goals. Think of that major thing, the number one thing and create your plan B using this if then statement. Um, and again, feel free to share any ideas in the, in the chat box. I always think that's really helpful. Oh, and I'm looking at the chat box now. I'm loving the implementation intentions that I'm seeing in there. That looks amazing. Okay, great. All right, so on to the next exercise. Um, this is using what's called habit stacking. So the key here is to stack your new habit on top of a current habit. Um, so I use this example of someone brushing their teeth because for many of us, brushing our teeth is we don't even think about it. It's just a non-negotiable. It's we wake up, we brush our teeth in the morning or before bed, both. And we don't, we don't have to put a lot of work into it because it's something that we've always done. So if you can take a current behavior that's already on autopilot, it can be, and you pair it with something that you are trying to do, it can become a cue for your new behavior. So some examples might be after I brush my teeth, I put on my running shoes um, or on my daily commute home from work, I will stop at the gym. Or when I go to make lunch, I'll make sure to fill up my water bottle. And so by creating these easy rules or patterns, you make it easier to really remember when to perform this new habit that you're trying to establish. Um, so the action step here would be, what's one current habit that you could stack with another? So for example, I'm going to set mine for this week is while I'm waiting for my coffee to brew in the morning, which is something that I do every morning and I don't think about, and I just kind of stand there and wait for it a lot of times, I'm going to try and do at least 10 squats. And that might not seem like a lot, but if I do 10 squats and multiply that by seven days a week, that's 70 squats that I'm doing in a week that I wasn't doing before. And it doesn't take any additional time out of my day. And that cue of making my coffee signals my new habit that I want to establish of trying to sneak in some extra activity where I can in my day. So if you have any ideas for habit stacking that you'd like to implement, feel free to share in the chat box again um, and get some ideas. Okay, the next and the, the last um, thing here for making it obvious is to design your environment. So really making the cues of the good habits that you're trying to implement, make them really obvious and visible. Our physical environment can be a huge driver of behavior change. Um, and the author of the book, Atomic Habits, he gives this example in his book. He says, you know, if, if I walk into a kitchen and I see a plate of cookies, 
I am way more likely to eat one or 10, even if I'm not hungry. It's just that visual cue. So if you want to really create and design an environment that sets you up for success, some examples might be, um, you know, if your goal is to try doing more strength training, can you place weights right in your living room? So it's something that you're seeing consistently. Um, if you're trying to get into more yoga or meditation or stretch more, can you keep a yoga mat like rolled out in your home office so that it's, a, again, a daily reminder, hey, I have a few minutes here. Can I do some stretching? Can I do some yoga? Can I do a little meditation? Um, the idea of designing your environment. So if your environment is you in the morning, you drop your kids at school and go to work or go straight to work, can you sign up for a gym that's right on your way to work or school drop off? So you're designing a, you're setting yourself up. Your gym location is actually designing that environment that you're more likely to go. Um, so if you want to make a a you know, a habit, a big part of your life, you have to make these cues a big part of your environment, like setting your gym bag out the night before, right in front of your door, um, setting up everything that you need. So all you have to do is it's, it's all taken care of and then you can go. So again, making it as obvious as possible. And I, in terms of designing your environment, I also want to include the importance of really surrounding yourself with people who also want the same goals as you. And that doesn't mean you need to ditch your friends that don't have the same exercise goals, um, but finding a community of like-minded people, whether it's you know joining a Facebook group or a running group or meeting people at a gym or a workout class. Um, because if you have friends who enjoy exercise, who like to try new things, you know your chances of being successful in terms of your own goals, because you're surrounded by people who you know, or have consistent routines and can hold you accountable and you can hold each other accountable for your goals. Um, it can make a huge difference in how successful you can be. Um, and you don't need to have a huge community. It could just be simply one person um, who you use to as an accountability partner. Um, and this can be really helpful, especially if you don't have someone at home who's very supportive of your fitness goals. Um, so having this additional community or even that one accountability partner can add that layer of enjoyment and, and accountability with your goals. Okay, law number two is to make it attractive. So how you can guarantee that you don't get bored or really stuck in an exercise rut. Um, and the one exercise we're gonna add, um, do here is called using temptation bundling. Um, and I really like this one, but it's pairing an action you want to do with an action you need to do. Um, because you're way more likely to complete a habit if you can find a way to couple it with something that you already want to do. So um, as you can see in this image here, if you love watching sports, it was just, you know, March Madness is going on right now. If you are usually sitting on the couch and watching March Madness, could you go to the gym and watch it on while walking on the treadmill or biking or on an elliptical or even at home? Could you have it on the TV and be doing, you know, some exercises during the commercial breaks, whatever it is. But by add, by combining these two, you still get to watch the game, which is something you want to do. And then you also get that added bonus of a workout, which is something you need to do. And then it takes out that like, oh, do I really have to go and motivate myself? It's like, oh, I'm just watching the game and I'm just getting that added bonus of exercising, which is something on my to-do list as well. So it's multitasking at its finest. Um, another great example of this is scrolling social media. If you're scrolling social media more than 30 minutes in a day and also saying, oh, I don't really have the time to exercise, can you find a way to bundle the two? Can you, can your workout time, you know, and obviously you wouldn't be able to do it while you know, lifting weights or something. But if you are on an elliptical or a bike or um, on a treadmill at a walking or incline walking, can you com combine the scrolling during that time? So again, you're multitasking, you're getting something that you want to do, which is that scrolling social media and also the bonus of the exercise as well. So my action uh, step for this one is what's one example of temptation bundling that you can use in your routine? Um, and I'll give my, my example is um, my temptation bundling for workouts is I chose a gym that had childcare. Uh, so on the days where I'm really not feeling like getting to the gym, I have my two kids who are 
begging me to go because they love it there. And then I also get that added temptation bonus of saying, oh, I get an hour of uninterrupted me time um, and self-care time while I'm there. So that is an extra motivator uh, for me and makes me a lot more likely to get there. So if you wanna share your temptation bundle in the chat box, that would be awesome. Someone said, listening to my favorite podcast while walking. I love that. Um, that's a great one. Oh, good. Oh, I'm seeing also some uh, habit stacking. I will waltz it while I brush my teeth. I like that. I want to steal that idea. As, um, the if then statement, as a walker, if it rains outside, I'm going to walk at the mall. Perfect. These sound really great. All right. On to our next law, which is um, make it easy. And the main idea here is just to create an environment where doing the right thing is, is as easy as possible and the unproductive thing is as difficult as possible. So one exercise here for making it easy is to find a way to decrease the number of steps between you and your good habits. So uh, really kind of reducing that friction. So for example, and we've used some of these examples before, you know, sleeping in clean exercise clothes and packing your bag the night before so that all you have to do is roll out of bed, put on your shoes, get out the door. Um, choosing a gym that's on your way to and from work or your kid's school so that you're not going one direction for work and one direction for the gym. And then that's a, a point in time where you might say, oh, do I really want to go this way and then this way? But if it's right on the way, you really don't have um an excuse uh let's see what else um signing up for classes in advance so that one you have that accountability of you maybe committed financially or um i know some gyms if you sign up for a class but don't show then um then you get kind of like a not a penalty but you know a warning that if you do that more than twice that something happens. So um, that can be another way to just kind of, you sign up for the class in advance, you don't have to think about it, you know you have to get there. All right, using the um, two minute rule. So this is really downscaling your habits until they can be done in, and the example here is two minutes or less, it could be five minutes, it could be 10 minutes, it could be one minute. So it really depends on whatever that, um, that habit is that you're trying to implement. But um, in the book, Atomic Habits, one example in that book is um, there was a reader who was starting his exercise journey and he set a rule that he could not stay at the gym for more than five minutes at the beginning. So like the second it became minute six, he would turn around and leave even if he was getting into his routine. Um, his one rule is he had to go every day, but he couldn't stay longer than five minutes. And what he was doing is he was really focusing on building the habit of not missing workouts and simply showing up. And then after one or two months, he had already mastered that habit of getting to the gym and was able to start focusing on more challenging workouts. And, you know, fast forward after, um, after a year, he lost about a hundred pounds. You know, this is along with nutritional changes and things like that. Um, but it can, it can be really easy to think that small habits aren't enough like, oh, five minutes a day at the gym, that's how am I gonna see results? That's not even worth it. When in reality, those small habits help, are helping to create an identity and create the identity that you want to build. So this person in the example here, he was building the identity. He was no longer the person that didn't have time to get to the gym or would blow off his workouts. His identity shifted into, I am the person that gets to the gym every single day. It doesn't matter how long I'm there for, but I'm showing up every day. And then once that was in place, he was able to move forward into focusing on the intensity of his workouts. Um, so basically you're, you're really just creating a new identity by showing up and using a simple two minute rule or a five minute rule or 10 minute rule. So um, the action step for this exercise would be, can you think of an easy two minute rule or a five minute rule that can help you simply show up for your workouts consistently? Um, and if you feel like you're already showing up consistently for your workouts, then maybe, and you're just maybe bored or in a rut, um, maybe it's, can you find a two or five minute rule to add some challenge to your current workout routine? Can you add like a two minute or a one minute sprint or a a two minute plank or something like, you know, after you build it up for a while. So kind of think of what are some 
simple rules that will help you get consistent with that. And you can, again, feel free to share in the um, chat box. All right, and then our final law, which is to make it satisfying. And, um, you know, in terms of making it satisfying, there's two kind of definitions here with this law. But the first one is the idea of how satisfying it can be when we discover how one habit can impact or trickle down to improve other areas of your life. Like what, how, what kind of impact does it have? Um, and as this relates to exercise, again, it can be super easy for exercise to fall to the bottom of our to-do list when we have a million other things going on. But when you think about it, is exercise the main acting or driving force that's gonna make you more likely to achieve the other stuff? You get the benefits of heart health, yes, but it can also improve your focus levels, your energy, your mood, your sleep. Many people tend to eat better when they're exercising regularly. So by prioritizing exercise, instead of it being something that tends to get dropped when you have a lot of things going on, what if we found a way to prioritize it because that will allow you to optimize your ability to thrive in all other areas of your life. Um, and I know this isn't always doable, but kind of reframing and changing the mindset around what exercise is and thinking of it more as how it trickles down and can improve all the other things you're trying to achieve in your day and make you even better. Um, and then the second definition of kind of making it satisfying is how can you reward your new habit so that it, again, you're giving yourself credit for all of the great work that you're doing and showing up and staying consistent with your routine. Um, so the first thing is using reinforcement, uh, whether that's giving yourself an immediate reward when you complete your habit, like, oh, if I get to the gym, I can pick up like a really nice coffee, my favorite coffee drink on the way home or on the way there. Um, using a habit tracker to just keep track of your habit streak and trying to kind of, you know, not break the chain. We talk about the idea of visual cues. It can be super powerful to have just right on your fridge, like a little uh, monthly calendar and just check mark the days that you're exercising so you can visually see, oh, wow, I've been really consistent. I've gone three days in a row. I want to keep this streak alive. Or also the other way you look at it and you say, oh, it's already Wednesday. I haven't gotten any workouts in. If I want to hit my goal of three times a week, that means I need to be going Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, so again, that visual reminder right there can be really powerful. Um, and then also like a kid's rewards chart, uh, you know, setting up that calendar or chart and putting a star or check mark every time you complete a workout. And you can do something fun, like after a certain number of stars, you come up with a fun way to reward yourself for your hard work. Like maybe you get uh, a, new, a new workout top or whatever it is, um, or treat yourself to, uh, you know, a date night or whatever it is to kind of um, just say like, hey, I'm doing a really great job because it's important also to not always be hard on ourselves and to celebrate our wins, no matter how big or small. All right, and then the last one here is really just never miss twice. And that doesn't mean, you know, two times in a row, depending on your schedule, your workouts might be at different times. It might, they might not be back to back and that's fine. But what we mean by this is if you start forgetting to do your habit, um, it's easy to sit there and say, oh man, like I didn't get my workout in today. I messed up. I, I'm just going to forget the rest of the week. I'm going to start fresh next Monday. What would be better is to just sit there and say, okay, I didn't get my work in today, my workout in today. That was my goal. Things got in the way and really just observing what got in the way. So using that if then statement of, okay, what got in the way? And next time I'm in this situation, how could I have made sure that I got my workout in, but also sitting there and saying, I didn't get it in today, that's okay. Tomorrow is a new day. It's a new attempt to start fresh. And so the key is really just getting back on track immediately. Don't feel guilty, don't feel bad. Just assess the situation like you're looking at it as an outsider and say, okay, what do I need to do to make sure that this is completed tomorrow or the next day and the next day? Okay. and. So those are the four laws. Um, if there are any questions on those, feel free to put them in the chat box um, now and we can address them at the end. 
Uh, and I know I get a lot of questions on, well, how long does it take to form a new habit? And it's really hard to say. Some studies say 21 days, some say 66, others say three months. I've even seen a study that says it can take eight months. And that's really because everyone is different. There's no one size fits all. Um, depending on what kind of goals or habits we're trying to implement, some might be bigger or smaller than others. It might take more time or less time, or we have different lifestyle factors that are, that are you know, impacting certain abilities or life changes that happen that might impact our ability to form a new habit. Um, so the one thing that I would just say here is in terms of how long does it take to form a new habit, that really doesn't make the big difference. What is going to make the difference is instead of saying how long, what about, what if we said, you know, how many repetitions does it take to put a new habit on autopilot? Because whether it's been three weeks or three months, it's really the frequency of the habit that will make the difference. Um, and at the end of the day, you really want these habits to be a part of your long-term lifestyle, regardless of how long it takes. Um, but I know it can be, you want like that definitive answer of, okay, after three weeks of doing this consistently, will this become a habit? And the key is making sure that the habits that you are putting in place are sustainable and not just something you can do for 21 days and then you can't stick with it for the long term. Are you implementing habits? And that's why we talk about, you know, making them small, very doable, very easy, very obvious habits that you can put into place so that you can stay consistent with it for. 21 days, 66 days, eight months, 10 years from now. All right, and then I know uh, a lot of people love the idea of being morning people and being able to get workouts in first thing in the morning. And I know, trust me, I know that lifestyle, um, sometimes you're not, you're just not able to, whether you have a long commute for work or whatever it is. So morning workouts are not for everyone, but if you are somebody that is trying to become more of a morning person so that you are able to work out at first thing in the morning, um, I wanted to take kind of these four laws that we discussed um, and apply them to what it would, what you would do to maybe become a morning person. And again, this isn't the only way to do it, but these are just some ideas. So taking the first law, which is to make it obvious, um, that would be maybe setting an intention implementation. So for example, I'm going to sleep for eight hours a night from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. in my bed. And um, in terms of maybe designing your environment, maybe it's something like, okay, I'm gonna make sure I schedule alarms on my calendar for what time I need to be in bed and what time I need to be waking up so that I have those reminders and it's kind of reducing those steps. If that, when that alarm goes off, it means it's time for bed. When that alarm goes off, it means it's time to get up. Um, going on to the next law, making it attractive. So maybe for temptation bundling, maybe you can set your coffee machine to start brewing like 10 minutes before you're about to, you should wake up for the day or you need to wake up for the day so that you kind of start smelling the coffee. It's kind of a, like almost a, like a cue, again, a cue or a trigger that it's time to get up, start your day. You have something to look forward to. Oh, I have my nice cup of coffee is gonna be ready when I wake up. Um, so that could be one example, or maybe if, um, if you just need to be getting into bed earlier in order to wake up earlier, maybe um, that temptation bundling would be getting into bed 10 minutes earlier to read a book that you're loving instead of staying up and watching an extra three episodes of a show. Making it easy. So taking that two minute rule and applying it to our sleep. Um, I have here start by waking up 15 minutes earlier in the morning if you kind of want to ease into it. If you're somebody that's usually waking up at eight, all of a sudden waking up at six is probably going to be a big shock to the system. So why not just say, okay, instead of waking up at eight, I'm going to try and wake up at 745 and show up for getting up at 745. Once that becomes easy, shift it another 15 minutes. Um, so again, breaking it up into smaller pieces and you're going to be a lot more likely to stick with it for the long term. And then lastly, making it satisfying. So keeping that sleep chart, you know, again, right on your fridge or in your closet, your bedroom closet door or whatever it is, um, where you can kind of make a rewards chart or check off the mornings that you wake up at the time that you had set for and set as your intention. Um, if you're more of a tech person, I really like the sleep cycle app um, or really any, you know, your Apple watch or Fitbits or um, any of the sleep apps that 
tell you, you know, you can see your review when you wake up the next morning and say, oh, I got a full eight hours of sleep or I got seven hours of sleep or I got nine hours, but it wasn't very restful. So that can be really helpful in another like kind of cue. And they send you, um, you know, if you, if you, been on a streak of getting eight hours of sleep a night, you'll get notifications saying, awesome job. You know, you've, you've hit your streak of, of sleeping eight hours for five nights in a row. So that feedback can be really helpful. Okay. And now um, just some simple ways to sneak exercise into your day. Like, you know, having more, um, like scheduled set workouts are, are great and should definitely be incorporated into, um, into your lifestyle. But it's also important to just kind of, can you find simple ways to, to stay active where you don't have to put a lot of effort in? And this is just kind of added bonus on top of the workouts that you're doing. Um, or if you're just getting started to exercise and the idea of going to a gym is a little intimidating or starting any exercise routine is intimidating, can we start with these simple um, little exercises to sprinkle into your day? So whether that's doing 20 push-ups or sit-ups or squats while you're getting ready, again, the compound effect, like doing you know, 20 sit-ups might not seem like a lot when you're, because it probably only takes you about one or two minutes in your day. But when you do that for seven days in a row, you're doing 140 of these exercises that you weren't doing before. So it adds up over time. Um, always taking the stairs, especially if it's less than, you know, two flights, um, try and always take the stairs instead of an elevator or an escalator, parking far away. The extra steps can be a really easy way to kind of get moving a little bit in your day-to-day, -day, uh, especially when we're tend to be a little more sedentary. We're sitting at, depending on your job, of course, but you know, sitting at desks and at, in front of computers a lot of the day. Um, holding a one minute plank before bed, or you could even challenge yourself to do a one minute plank a few times during your day. Like maybe right when you wake up at lunch and at dinner, and before you know it, you've done a three minute plank in your day and you do that seven days in a row, that's 21 minutes of planking that you've been doing for the week. Uh, having a dance party, always super fun. Um, walking or biking to run any errands. Like, of course, this depends on where you're located. And sometimes that's easier to do in certain places than others. Um, or even just kind of, uh, again, on your commute, can, is there an opportunity to, uh, you know, I don't, if you're in a city, for example, like instead of taking a bus or a subway, um, to get to work, could you walk part of the way and then take a subway over or something along those lines just to get those extra steps in. Um, doing jumping jacks or running in place every time you have a, you know, a, there's a TV commercial break. That's something, again, super easy um, where you're just sitting and watching TV. It's kind of like that habit stacking, or I'm sorry, the temptation bundling of, okay, I'm watching TV, but can I sneak in some exercise here while I'm at it? Um, speed cleaning your house. I know many people will sit there and say, oh, I have the, you know, there are only a certain number of hours in the day. I can't get to the gym and make sure my house is, you know, kept up. So can you find a way to combine the two and maybe make it fun and set a timer and see how much you can do in a certain period of time and kind of speed it up and get the heart rate moving a little bit more. Um, seven minute workout. I love this option. You can just simply come up with seven exercises and do each for one minute. So some examples of exercises here, uh, squats, push-ups, crunches, lunges, jumping jacks, tricep dips, planks, uh, running in place really fast, doing quick feet, mountain climbers. So these are all body weight exercises. And it's the perfect example of, well, seven minutes doesn't seem like a lot, when you are done with those seven minutes, you will feel like you got an amazing workout. You'd be surprised how doing one minute of each of those seven exercises can make a huge difference. So if you feel like you don't have the time, this seven minute workout can be a great option. Um, and then like one of the examples given uh, in the chat box here, walking and calling a friend or listening to a podcast and audiobook. So 
that pairing something you need to do. If you need to catch up with a friend or a family member, that can be such a nice opportunity to be like, oh, why don't I take it outside and I get the extra benefit of that exercise, being in nature, getting outside, getting some fresh air. So it kind of adds to the enjoyment and that want to factor. And if you have any simple ways of sneaking exercise in your routine, feel free to, um, to be adding those or sharing those in the chat box here. All right, and then lastly, I just wanted to share, I know, especially during COVID um, and also winter months, we tend to um, gravitate more towards home workouts. So these are just a few of my favorite free online YouTube workouts um, that I like to share. Pop Sugar Fitness, This, if I had to choose one on this list, that would be my number one recommendation. They have thousands of workouts and they're from like top trainers in the country and they are a variety, whatever you type of workout you like to do, whether it's dance, um, strength training, kickboxing, uh, yoga, Pilates, anything you could think of, they have it. And they also, um, on their, on their uh, YouTube channel, they have playlists that where they separate it into 10 minute workouts, 20 minute workouts, 30 minute workouts, et cetera, so that depending on how much time you have, you can pick and choose. If you only have 20 minutes to do something, you can do it um, and just search there. Um, other ones here, I know uh, Lauren was talking earlier about um, really enjoying the Mad Fit uh, YouTube channel. She's really great. If you like more uh, yoga, Boho Beautiful and Travis Elliott are my recommendations. The Boho Beautiful is fun because she does um, videos in really cool locations. So you feel like you're doing yoga or Pilates on a mountain or on a beach. And so it's also very relaxing and mood boosting at the same time. Um, if you like dance workouts, Dance Fit University has a bunch of Zumba videos. Um, also that Pop Sugar Fitness has like hip hop or Latin cardio dance or Zumba. Um, and then Sweaty Betty has really nice free workouts for kind of toning and lower impact um, strength, strength workouts. Um, so what I recommend is uh, to make it easier is if you have, if you're on YouTube, create a workout playlist. So spend some time kind of like going through some of these and anytime you see one that you really like, add it to your workout playlist. So that when you do find yourself in a situation where it's like, okay, I am gonna do my home workout. I only have this much time. Instead of spending an extra uh, 30 minutes trying to figure out what workout you're gonna wanna do and kind of falling into that bunny hole of, searching and finding a million videos, um, you already have your set playlist and you can be like, okay, what do I feel like doing? You look at your choices and then pick it and you go right away um, rather than wasting a ton of time trying to search for what you want to do. And if you have any um, of your favorite YouTube videos that you don't see on this list, please, please share. Um, uh, please share in the chat box. We're always looking for, um, for different exercise or yeah, different exercises and different people to follow. Um, and it can just, it makes it so easy. It's free, it's right there. And uh, so you can be really successful. So that's the end of um, the session for today. I would love if there are any questions, please um, don't be shy, ask away. And thanks to everybody who participated in the chat box there. It was it was really fun seeing your ideas and, and brainstorming and it's nice sharing with everybody so that we can use that as inspiration. We can all inspire each other. And we do have a couple questions on our last few minutes here. Um, which of these laws that you talked about do you think are the most important to fitness success? It's hmm. a great question. I would say that it's tough to answer that because I think it really depends on for each person, they're going to, like we've mentioned a million times, there's going to be different obstacles that get in the way. So for somebody who is just starting a fitness journey, they might need to just, the number one important thing for them would be maybe implementing that two minute rule just to get started and to get, sh to show up or doing those implementation intentions, simply just writing down how you see yourself succeeding and what you would like to implement. So I would say that would be more important. Um, if you're somebody who doesn't feel that they have a lot of support at home um, or with their current group of people that they surround themselves with, then I would say the most important thing for them would be to try and find 
one person that they can use for extra accountability. So it's tough to say. I would, I, if I had to pick one, I would say that that first law, the making it obvious, I feel like the exercises that we covered there, when I, when I pair it, when I like boil it down, that's, those are huge. Like the if then statements, the implementation intentions, designing your environment, I would say that's probably the most important one. But it might be different. Um, and to go off, yeah. And to go off of that too, um, you talked about kind of like if then statements. Um, are there any examples that you have for, say, for your own clients that have been um, specific, uh, particularly successful and seem to work really well? Um, I th okay, so I would say the the example of the sleeping in the clean workout clothes, that was huge because um, I've worked with multiple people who they're like, the hardest thing is that in the morning, it's dark, you're cozy in bed, like the idea of getting out in, in the winter, if it's cold, you don't want to change into your clothes. So just that you're already dressed, you don't have the excuse, you just roll out of bed, get out the door, you don't have time to question you know, what am I doing here? You're just, you're, you're already out the door at that point. So that's been a really good, if then like, you know, if, um, if I'm having trouble getting to the gym in the morning, I'll do this. Um, similar to that. Uh, another one is, uh, if, if you're somebody that, that, uh, hits the snooze, snooze button in the morning and you end up missing your morning workouts. One thing that we, uh, implemented there was we had people charge their phones, um, not right at their bedside table or their alarm clocks. We, we set them like across the room. So they actually had to physically get out of bed. So there, theirs was, okay, if I continue to hit my snooze button, then I will charge my phone or put my alarm clock on the other side of the room. So I'm forced to get up and out of bed. And even just that simple act of getting out of the bed was that momentum to get out the door or to start, start working out or whatever it is. Great. Um, another one here we have is, do you have any, what are your kind of your top suggestions for um, avoiding burnout with workout habits? Yeah, I think the key there is um, a few things. One, are you doing workouts that you actually enjoy or that you feel like you have to do or, or are giving you the most bang for your buck? Um, like I had a client who she felt like if she wasn't doing high intensity training, like five or six days a week, that it, that it wasn't a workout unless you were like absolutely dead at the end of your workout. And because of that on days where she would wake up and be like, my body is just not feeling a workout physically. And that's totally normal. You really shouldn't be doing super high intense workouts six days a week. Um, it, what happened was she ended up just not showing up at all. And she would not work out unless she felt like it was going to be the most intense workout of her life. And that was actually a barrier to her, which she thought was a really good goal of trying to do these really intense workouts was holding her back from moving forward. So when she kind of worked on her mindset and found ways um, and found workouts that she enjoyed doing rather than just would give the biggest calorie burn, um, she was able to find kind of that gray area instead of that black or white, that gray area of, okay, I'm going to, you know, I still want to do high intensity workouts because those are the things I enjoy doing. Um, but maybe six days a week is too much. Can I do two or three days of high intensity? Can I sprinkle in one or two days of lower intensity strength training, or maybe, um, you know, yoga or Pilates or whatever it is. And just by doing that, she started showing up consistently for those five to six days a week, just with more variety. So she didn't have that burnout of one, doing the same workout all the time, which gets really boring, um, two, exhausting your body unnecessarily and then not wanting to continue and then feeling bad for not showing up. Um, and so she was really able to just, so I would say variety making sure you're doing workouts that you actually enjoy and just trying new things too, so that you always have a, a repertoire, kind of like if plan A doesn't feel good, if you don't feel like doing the run that you had scheduled for the day, what, what YouTube video can you throw on really quick um, to do instead at home? That's probably gonna feel a little bit better and you're still showing up, it's just a different workout. That would be my suggestion. Great. Well, that's all we have for today. So Kristen, I want to thank you so much for uh, doing these lunch and learn sessions with us and spending the last month with us. This has been 
fantastic and so much fun. Um, and I want to thank everyone else for joining us, spending your lunch hour with us. I hope you've enjoyed these and learned something new. Um, we will be sending out this recording um, in our follow-up email, and we'll also make sure to send out um, Kristen's email, Kristen's business info, if you're um, interested in getting in touch with her and learning more about what Kristen does. Um, but yeah, that is it for today. So thank you, everybody, and have a great day.